everybody, it's Beck here, and today I thought I'd do a bit of a tutorial on how to paint animal eyes. They're my most favourite thing to paint, and I enjoy that out of anything else currently that I ever paint. So I really hope that you enjoy this tutorial type of style and talk through on how I create my paintings, uh, starting with the eyes. So thanks. And welcome to the voiceover. I have pre-sketched out my picture and I'm using this reference photo. As you can see, I've also taped down my paper so it doesn't bend and buckle as much with a constant application of water. Watercolour painting is all about layers and working from light to dark. I start with diluting blacks and browns with a lot of water so it becomes more transparent. This way I can go around my artwork and outline areas I want more shadows and textures to be later on. It's a really simple step that doesn't look like much now because it will all get covered eventually, but it really helps me a ton, especially when my pencil lines are so faint and get lost almost instantly. I'm also using my favourite Winsor & Newton Size Zero watercolour brush, which if you follow my Instagram, I posted on my story a couple of days ago the heartbreak of accidentally leaning the bristles against something, therefore damaging the entire brush. And yes, I did try to rebend the bristles, but it didn't work. Moral of the story, if you're just starting out painting, or even if you do it all the time, make sure to keep your brushes in good condition and in a safe place, because essentially they're your tools and you have to take care of them. And if you would like to see any videos on how to keep your art supplies in top condition for as long as possible, please leave a comment below and I'll try to get to that. When it comes to fur, I do different styles of paint strokes and use different brushes depending on the fur type and if I want to have it very realistic looking or have that traditional watercolour look. Here I'm doing the traditional messy style for my base layer using a small round ended brush. Later on though, when I go in and do the finer details, you will see how I create a more realistic look with very fine thin brushes and more precise strokes. Now that I have my base layer on and I have a clear vision of where everything is placed, it's time to focus on the main attraction, the eyes. Now, eye colour can be absolutely anything you like. If you want a dog to have bright purple eyes, absolutely go for it. Generally though, I tend to stick to a more realistic colour palette, though I do plan on creating more colourful artworks in the near future. Though you can't see much right now, just like with the grey fur, this light blend of yellow and green are laying down the foundations to a more realistic eye. The crucial thing with realism is getting the details and especially the shading right. Doing the shading wrong can leave portraits looking very flat, unless of course that's what you aim to do. As you can see, I'm starting to put green, a darker green shade at the top of the eye. In the reference photo, where the light is positioned has made dark shadows over the top and inner surface of the eye itself. Building these layers with darker shades will create a more rounded illusion. Now, with watercolour, patience is definitely key. It's important to let each layer dry in this instance, so that the green and the yellow don't turn into a big blur of, well, green. You want to find areas, and to achieve this, a little patience is definitely needed while the layers dry. Now, while I wait, I place more darker details around the eye and the surrounding fur using just blacks and browns. As you can see, I've changed my brush to a very small, thin, bristled one. This is amazing for very small areas where you don't want to apply too much paint or water and you want to have more control over where your paint actually is directly going. You wouldn't want to use a larger brush for fine details because it will just turn into a big mess. Here I'm going back over my now dried eye with a very transparent black, once again to create more dimension and depth to it.
Now, it's important to continue to look back and forth to your reference photo if you're not too sure how light and shadows work in a painting. That's not a dig at anybody at all. It took me quite some time to understand how to create depth in an artwork by using darker and lighter shades on a particular area. Practice is definitely key, just like with anything. Looking back at portraits I did four years ago to looking at portraits I did one year ago, and it's amazing to see just how much my skills have improved with constant practice and understanding more of these techniques. I'm going in now with a thin, long brush. This type of brush holds more paint and can be used for longer strokes. I use it a lot for fine hairs, eyelashes and whiskers in particular, because you can stroke it further across the page without taking your hand off to reload the brush. And now for the fun part. This is the part that's crucial in how I paint eyes. Without it, it's not really an eye. And that is white highlights. Now, you can use whatever other mediums you like for white highlights, as long as you can use it in fine detail. I used to use gel pens, but the pen itself was way too inconsistent, in the way that sometimes the ink came out and sometimes it didn't. I have also tried using acrylic paint, but I didn't like the glogginess of it. White pencils are also good, but I like more pigmented highlights, which is why I use Winsor & Newton drawing ink. To make an eye look realistic, you have to remember that it's a wet surface. I like placing a few spots of white in the inner corner of the eye, placing a very thin semi-transparent line at the waterline, and adding a few tiny specks to the top edge of the eye, and it can absolutely do wonders to the design of it. Using diluted ink, I place a few small strokes of white using a very tiny thin brush at the top half of the eye, making sure not to go too overboard with the ink and make it look a bit messy. Then, once it's dried, use a non-diluted ink and place a few more spots on top of the already placed ink. If that sounds a bit confusing, I'm really sorry. Hopefully you would understand when seeing it. You're probably wondering by now why I haven't continued to paint the other eye. Unfortunately because of where my tripod and camera is set up, which is literally in front of my face, it was a bit too awkward and uncomfortable to maneuver around the setup to get to the other eye. So I've decided that I'm going to become a beauty guru and do the other eye off camera. So I'll be right back with the finished results. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching everybody and I hope you really enjoyed how I paint eyes. To me they just make a picture whole. So thank you for watching. And I hope that you took some tips and tricks out of it as well maybe. Who knows. If you haven't and you're interested in following along my arty type of journey, uh, please hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a big thumbs up. Especially if you like tigers. If you like tigers, get thumbs up. Because I like tigers. I am also on Facebook and Instagram at Beckles Art, same way it's spelled here. So I post pretty much daily on those platforms. So if you're interested, hit those follow buttons and like buttons. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you on the next one. Have a fun and dandy day. Bye!